Chapter 10 Beached Victoria always tried her best to do the right thing and be a good person. Even in the early days, when everything was in chaos and people were so desperate, she always stuck her neck out to protect people, to try and fix this world. Every meal she had was one less meal to feed somebody else with. She had to earn it. She wondered if she did the right thing. Should she have stayed at the hangar? Could she have really made a difference there? She couldn't even save Adam, and who knows if Jessica made it out of the lake in her condition. She liked to think that there was still hope, as long as John was saved. She can hear muffled voices as John presses down on her chest, trying to restart her heart. Maybe it's not time to die yet. She opens her eyes and holds over, vomiting out water and gasping for air. She is coughing and choking on the floor. The inside of her nose is stinging from having had water up there too. Three survivors look at her as she struggles. She's not sure if they're looking to see if she's okay or just waiting for answers like everybody was with John back in the hangar. Had a nice drink? John jokes, smiling at her. She's too busy trying to breathe to start laughing. We've beached near that other group. Their base is a short walk from here, John says. Vic looks at her group. Adam is holding his bite wound on his arm. There's no stopping it now. He will die. Jessica is very pale. That little swim just now didn't do her cut any favours. John, however, seems fine, other than being a little wet. He seems to actually be a little chirpy, enjoying the freedom of not having to worry about leading the team. But she can see he is also worried about our wounded party members. John checks his weapons to make sure they are still functioning after that swim. He cocks his M4. Good to go. He looks at Adam, then back to Vic. It's best if we deal with this now. Vic looks at Adam. He's scared, but he knows that there's no use in fighting it. We've been through this too many times before. He's not going to run. Just give the order, Victoria. I'll deal with it. Victoria looks to Adam one last time. Is this what it's like to lead? I'm ordering people to die now, she thinks. This is one of the hardest things she's ever had to do. At least ordering someone into a dangerous situation, they can still survive. But just killing like this? She looks away and squeezes her eyes shut, unable to face anybody. Do it, John, she says. He aims his rifle at Adam's head and puts a clean bullet in his forehead. He softly slumps onto the grass, eyes closed. He looks peaceful, at least. Not half eaten or with his skull smashed open like most people are these days. Victoria looks to Jessica now. She doesn't look very good. If this wound kills her, she'll turn. But at least there's a chance for her. That's enough deaths for today, Victoria says. Jessica, we're going to find you a doctor. You'll be okay. She looks to John. How can he kill someone like that? It's not really a bad thing. Someone had to do it. I guess it's easier for John now. He was just following orders. He looks back at her, ready to follow her anywhere. Okay, team. Let's roll out, Vic says. It's not long before they reach the camp where the other group of survivors stay. It's much smaller than our place, an old warehouse, but they have a garage at the back of the base. Vic is familiar with the place since she has visited them before. She has always been good at building connections with people. John, not as much, so any diplomatic or trading missions were run by Vic. Hey guys, you in there? Vic calls out. A man sticks their head out from the warehouse entrance, then goes back inside. That was weird. Hey assholes! John yells out, irritated by their silence. You better say something if you don't want to get shot. John's approach seems a little aggressive, Vic thinks. But he's right. If they don't say anything, it's probably...
probably because they are dead inside. We're not going in there, are we? Jessica says, concerned. It's dark in there, John notes. If there's another way to their jeep, then we should take it. There isn't, Vic says morbidly. It's locked from the inside. The only way in is through the warehouse. Jessica gives a disappointed and scared sigh. We can get through this, guys, Vic says, taking charge of the team. If we work together and watch each other's backs, we'll be okay. John nods. Let's do it, he says enthusiastically. The three of them enter the warehouse, moving slowly to give their eyes time to adjust to the darkness. Vic takes the lead with her bolt-action rifle. Jessica is behind on her right, holding her frying pan. She is the least experienced and most vulnerable in the group, so she makes sure to stay close. John is to the left, M4 at the ready, and a 9mm pistol as a sidearm. Stay sharp, Vic says as they move in. They hear shuffling noises on the left, as some cans from a living space are knocked over. One of them is sneaking around on the left, Vic notes. A zombie emerges from the darkness in front of them and darts behind some boxes to the right. They swing their weapons and fix them on the boxes where the zombie hides. Despite their guns, Vic knows that they are in an awkward position, with enemies on both sides. As she moves towards the boxes, a sudden realization hits that probably everyone has their backs to that first zombie. John, check left, she yells, making sure not to take her eyes off the boxes. John spins around to find the zombies already moving towards them. He moves just in time to fire two bullets into the zombie's head. Vic doesn't see this. She only hears the shots. John? She shouts. One down, John replies calmly. They notice the sound of quiet footsteps coming from the way they came in. Jessica turns, and the zombie tackles her to the ground. The others turn, but then a second zombie jumps from above and lands on top of John. As soon as Vic turns away from, from the boxes, the zombie emerges from behind and tackles her to the ground as well. John struggles with the zombie on top of him, determined not to let Vic down by dying on her. He holds his left arm against the zombie's throat, making it easy for him to hold the monster back. He sees Jessica next to him. She is weak, and the zombie is getting close to biting her. John is just close enough to give a hard kick to the zombie's head, buying Jessica some valuable time. John pulls his sidearm from his holster with his right hand. The zombie on him understands the dangers of a human's gun. It grabs his arm, so he can't turn it on the zombie on top of him. John is running out of strength in his left arm. He is unsure how long he has to find a way to kill this thing. He can't use his gun to kill this one. He can, however, aim forward, where he can see Victoria ahead of him. She is on the ground, holding back her zombie with her rifle. Victoria, lift its head, John yells out, hoping she has the presence of mind to understand his meaning. Gently, the zombie's head rises, giving him a clear shot of the back of its head. Bang. John releases his hold on his pistol, not having time to see if he made his shot. He brings his right arm to hold back the zombie. His hand arrives on the zombie's chest just in time, as there is little strength left in his arm to carry on the struggle. Bang. Another shot echoes through the room, as flesh and bone flies out of the back of John's zombie's head. Victoria cocks her rifle, now standing, and aims for another shot. Bang. She lands her bullet through the temple of the zombie that is on Jessica. Its mouth was just a few inches from Jessica's throat. John shoves the zombie off of him. Jessica is stuck, too weak to move hers. John gets up and shuffles the corpse off of her. She's almost unconscious. John uses his arms to carry her. Come on, Vic says panting. The jeep isn't far. They run to the end of the warehouse where the garage is. They enter the garage. The lights are on in here, thank God. 
Vic closes the door behind them and knocks over a shelf to make a quick barricade. The Jeep stands in the middle of the room. It's one of the most beautiful vehicles she has ever seen. Giant wheels and plenty of storage space. She might even name it. What do you think happened here? John says, referring to the fact that everyone here seems to be dead. Probably a guy named Fred ruined everything, Vic comments. That guy was always an asshole. She grabs the keys from the wall. She knows exactly where they are from her last visit. She then presses a button on the wall, and the garage doors slowly start to open. John places Jessica's unconscious body in the back of the jeep. Hang in there, buddy, he says warmly. Hey, look, they have a portable radio in the back, John notes. That must be new, Vic says. It wasn't there the last time I was here. You drive, she commands, and tosses him the keys. Let's head north. All right, he says. They jump in the jeep, and once the garage doors are open enough, John drives off. As they emerge into the daylight and start putting some distance between this place, Vic spots several people running after them. They won't catch us in this. Vic? Jessica groans. Am I alive? You're still with us, Trooper. Don't worry. We're going to find you a doctor, Vic says soothingly. So what's the plan, boss? John asks eagerly, pleased that he is not the one who has to come up with the answer to that question. Are we just going to go north and get some conscripted into a different war now? Pretty much, Vic replies calmly. It beats being on the zombie team, she adds. I can use this radio to contact them when we get closer. Hopefully they won't shoot us on sight, and they will surely have a doctor to help Jessica. We can't let her die, John. We've lost enough people already. You're right, Victoria. We'll do whatever it takes. Victoria sits back in her seat. She can feel the cool breeze as the jeep drives. She looks out to enjoy the view. Humanity is not doing as good as it used to, but planet Earth seems to be doing alright. Since everything has stopped, the air seems cleaner and the grass seems a little greener. You know, John, Vic says optimistically, after everything we've been through, I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, John says, sharing in her optimism. I think so too. And that, ladies and gentlemen, marks the end of Zombie Panic. I hope you guys have has had as much fun listening as I've had narrating this thing. It's actually the first thing I've ever really written and narrated. So, I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for listening.